I'm going to talk about how methylene blue can be combined with a couple different modalities to increase the fat burning effect of it. And we're going to talk about how to time it, how to utilize it, but also just the cool science. Now, if you like the science, please drop a comment down below saying more videos like this or whatever. Just engage with the video because YouTube likes that. And if you're ever watching my videos in the future, it does help to just drop a comment, even if you're just saying hello, because YouTube really likes that engagement. So let's go ahead and jump into how utilizing methylene blue along with sunlight or in some cases even just red light can be really useful for enhancing the fat burning effect. So first, how does methylene blue actually influence fat burning? It's not necessarily driving more fatty acid oxidation like at a sand cell. It's not like you take methylene blue, which is technically a synthetic, and you're, you're making yourself oxidized fat. But it does increase the ability to sort of complete the chain in a potentially dysfunctional mitochondria. Okay, so in the mitochondria, the way that you produce energy is you're taking electrons from the food that you eat and they pass down these different stages of the, of the mitochondria until they get to a final stage known as complex four or cytochrome C oxidase. This final stage is where ATP is finally formed, where you actually produce the energy. Okay, now in a lot of cases, these mitochondria are broken. Even in like somewhat healthy people, you can have damaged mitochondria. What methylene blue does is it's essentially an electron donor and carrier. So it allows for you to take that electron and skip sort of the broken chunks of the mitochondria and get it to the end result. So it gets it to the end placement of the mitochondria to produce energy. How does this increase fat loss? Well, because a mitochondria that ordinarily would just abort its function is now able to actually utilize a fuel. Right? So let's say this is purely hypothetical and not scientific, but it illustrates the point. Let's say you have 100 mitochondria and 50 of them work and 50 of them don't in terms of like proper manufacturing of energy. Okay, well, if you have a bunch of fatty acids coming in for aerobic oxidation or aerobic metabolism, okay, 50 of those are going to have a harder time processing that fuel. They may complete it eventually, they may abort the process and just end up with more oxidative stress. But if you can allow methylene blue to sort of be the carrier and the recipient at the, uh, you know, in the mitochondrial level, then in essence, maybe those other 50 or maybe even just 25 of them will work. So you now have more powerhouses for fat burning to occur. So for someone that is dealing with metabolic dysfunction, this could be quite powerful because you're giving them a leg up and an opportunity to use the fuel they otherwise didn't have a chance to utilize. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with the sunlight? How does taking the sun in influence methylene blue? Well, if you look at the image that's on the screen right now, okay, sunlight, or particularly red light, but you get it from the sun too, is going to activate what's called cytochrome C oxidase. Okay, so look at this. So that's that complex four. That's an important part of the mitochondria. It's activating it. It's lighting it up so it can produce more ATP. That's the whole like reason like people are big fans of red light in the first place is it's activating ATP production, increasing energy manufacturing at that particular site that it's being hit with. So you shine it here, you're going to get it there. You shine it here, you're going to get it there. Example. Now, of course, this is going to increase energy production. It's also going to increase a little bit of reactive oxygen species because you're producing more energy, right? More ATP equals more oxidative stress. But anyway, this is where methylene blue comes in. So methylene blue helps the electron get to that end point of the mitochondria. Okay, that point I'm talking about, cytochrome C oxidase. So when that happens, you now have a cytochrome C oxidase that is activated and can produce energy. So you've gotten the electron to that point more efficiently. So methylene blue is helping that electron get to where it needs to go, and the sunlight is activating it even more. That's why people will say, and you probably just have heard people mention it, like if you take methylene blue and you get out in the sun, it actually kicks into overdrive. You can get a lot of energy and potentially even more fat burning out of it, which is pretty darn cool. Not to mention there's a pretty profound appetite suppressing effect that comes from methylene blue just because you're producing energy. It's like when things are firing right, you're producing energy, you don't want to just go willy nilly and eat everything. And if you do want to eat something, it's usually to give you more energy to go continue to do the things that you're doing, right? So it's really important to sort of keep these things in mind when you time your methylene blue, because if you can time it with your sort of sun exposure or even red light exposure, like maybe 
30 to 60 minutes after consumption of methylene blue, it could be really powerful. Then what I'll usually do is have electrolytes or something, and that way I'm just staying fasted, because if you combine methylene blue with fasting, it's really effective too, because you're actually aiding the fasting process. And again, you don't have to like methylene blue. That's totally on you. Like, you don't have to do this at all. I think a low-dose methylene blue works really well. But then again, having combining it with the electrolytes because you're increasing that energy expenditure, that energy turnover. So I use the Element electrolytes, which I've linked to down below. You guys know I'm a big fan of them. And the sad thing is most people are getting their salt from processed foods these days, and I'm just not about that. So I'm gonna get my sodium from a place that I know when I'm exercising or when I'm fasting. So Element has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium, which for me being an active person, especially in a fasted state on an empty stomach with methylene blue on board, it makes sense for me to use Element. I'm a big fan of them. I do use other electrolytes sometimes if I don't want as much sodium, but by far my staple is Element. So that link gets you a free sample variety pack with all their leading flavors with any purchase. So you could buy their sparkling drinks or whatever, and you get the free sample variety pack. So a big thank you to them for the continued support and a big thank you to you for trusting me with my sponsors that make this content possible. That link is down below. Let's get even more out of this though. Let's see how this works, right? Because there is something that's called photobiomodulation with a chromoform. What the heck does that even mean? In this case, methylene blue is the chromoform, okay? So photobiomodulation means, just like the name implies, light, photo, bio, body, modulation, change. So light having an impact on our cellular or metabolic change, like actually making an impact. The methylene blue absorbs the light. It is a photosynthesizer. So it takes the light and actually concentrates it even more so now the sunlight just became more potent in terms of the actual biomodulation effect. Not necessarily the burning. I don't know the answer to that one. I could imagine it actually could help because it's an antioxidant. We'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, taking methylene blue allows the sunlight to come in and get into that cell and do its job even more as far as like cytochrome C oxidase and the actual near infrared effect. If you don't want to use the sun, Methylene blue plus red light therapy is really, really powerful too, because now it's taking the red light and it's making that potentially more effective. And the red light is actually making the methylene blue more effective. So it's sort of this like collaborative effort, photosynthesizing effect on the body. It's really cool. I want to go back really quick to the nitric oxide piece though, because this is really important. Okay. And what I mean by this is when you produce more energy and you have sunlight and you have red light, that helps displace nitric oxide out of the heme center of a mitochondria or cell. Then you have methylene blue, which can actually inhibit nitric oxide synthase. So essentially what's happening is you balance each other out, right? So methylene blue is not gonna hurt you because of its inhibition of nitric oxide synthase, but it's actually, when combined with the sun, you end up with this harmonious balance. It's almost like you have the production of nitric oxide that gets removed out of the cell, and you have a, a creation of nitric oxide that occurs from the sun hitting the skin, and methylene blue helps balance it. So you're actually staying with a nice amount of nitric oxide without going too much in one way or the other. I know that's a little bit complicated, but still, it's important to note that they work synergistically in that case. Now, a lot of people also ask, like, is there a natural alternative to methylene blue? And the truth is, is that, you know, methylene blue is a synthetic. There's not gonna really be a natural alternative to it. And some people don't like synthetics. Personally, with like methylene blue, I will take four milligrams. I'll take like a really low dose. So I think that that's perfectly fine, especially how infrequently I take it. Now, if you're more metabolically unhealthy, you could probably take it more frequently. I'm in good shape. I just want to take it on the days where I'm pushing myself a little bit harder. But as far as a potential natural alternative, the closest you're going to find is something like spirulina or blue-green algae, but it's not because of the pigment. It's just because it works in a similar pathway, but more so synergistic. It's definitely not doing the same thing methylene blue is. I did a video on how you could combine them for synergistic effects. Some people just have a hard stance against methylene blue, and I totally get it. Like, who am I to tell you to take something you don't want to take? And if you're going to get one, don't just get one on Amazon. Don't get one that has a bunch of heavy metals. Do one that actually does third-party testing and doesn't have that stuff. Personally, I use Troscriptions. I think that's a really good one. I'll link out to them down below, but I think that they're the only one that actually does third-party testing and doesn't have heavy metals. You just gotta be careful. You don't need to be taking these crazy high doses that people are taking too. Like four milligrams is all you need. Take it on the days where you're gonna be pushing yourself and leverage it with the sun the best that you possibly can. So as always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you tomorrow.